Hi everyone. Today we're going to go over setting up the Arducam OV5642 uh, and we're going to set it up specifically with the Arduino Due. Uh, we're using the Arduino Due uh, because the Arduino Due has a lot more storage, uh, more processing power. Um, it has more things than the Arduino Une, Uno, for example. Um, if we happen to use Arduino Uno, we would still be able to use a camera, but then we couldn't do much more after that because the camera code takes up most of the space of the Uno. So if we wanted to say develop a CubeSat or something and add a ton more things aside from the just the camera, we would want something more capable, something with a lot more storage like the Arduino Due. Um, and that's why we are using this. So let's get started. Um, well, quick overview. We're going to go over how to set up the code, how we're going to configure the Arduino Due in the code to work with the ArduCam. And then we're going to look at how to wire up the ArduCam with Arduino Due so we can start using it. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go on Google and we're gonna type in ArduCam GitHub because GitHub is where uh, the code, the open source code is located. So once you do that, you might find um, this, for example, Arducam Lee. Uh, you can click on his site or her, I'm not sure. But um, here you can see that this is the Arducam library for Arduino boards and this is exactly what we want. So we're gonna click here. And I'm gonna post all these links um, in a doc that you have access to, so you can just end like immediately end up here. Okay, so this is actually all the files that um, we want. We're going to download all these files into a zip folder in just a sec, but quickly, if you look at the README file, you're going to see this. So he gives you a quick introduction. Um, you can see the cameras that are supported. As you can see, our camera is right here the OV5642, 5 megapixel um, JPEG camera. And there's these are the microcontrollers that are supported as well. And as you can see, the Arduino Due is right here. Another reason why we're using the Due because it is supported by this camera and the code is already accessible. So this is the easiest, best way we can really um, approach all this camera stuff with CubeSat in my opinion. Um, so you can read through this, but he doesn't really go over how to connect um, to a DUA specifically. I had to do a little bit of research, so let's just follow this tutorial and see how that's done. So for GitHub, you have to click here on the code. This is the little download symbol. We're going to click download zip, and it's basically going to download all these files into a zipped folder. So, for me, I already made, in my documents folder, I already made um, another folder called Arducam. You just have to put it in a, any folder that you're familiar with um, that you'll be able to access later. So I'm going to click Save. And it's showing downloading here. I downloaded it earlier for a test, so ignore this one. But anyway, it's right here. We're gonna hit Show in Folder. And this is what we want. If you click on it, you can see there's stuff inside. But um, what we're going to want to do is actually, um, we're going to want to extract all for now. We're going to figure out how to add this folder into the Arduino IDE, and it's going to show up as a library. So basically all these files here are like a library. Well, some of them are, not all of them, but we wanna make this folder into a library. So as you can see, I just extracted the folder and that means that um, it was uncompressed and all the original files with the original sizes are shown here. And if you click here once, you're gonna see that it just takes us to another folder called Arduino Master. And this is a little redundant. Um, but if you click again, you're going to be able to see that there's a lot more files here. There's the same readme file. It's basically the same thing um, that we saw. So you can see that this is an Arducam, and then Arducam Touch, the OV5642, 
7670 FIFO, the, this, the blah, blah, blah. And this is all the exact same thing um, as we can see here. So when you go, the one, the folder that we're interested in is actually this one. A touch one has to do with a specific shield that you can buy. It's a camera with a touch screen, and we're not using this, so we're not going to worry about this. Uh, this one is also a different camera we don't want to deal with. And again, this is a different type of thing that we're not dealing with. We're dealing with just the camera itself. And when we hook it up to the Arduino Duet. Um, and so the folder we're interested in is this folder. And here you can see that there's a lot of things. In C++, you tend to have um, a .cpp file and a .h file. There's a lot of .h files. We're going to go over this at some point. Um, quick thing is that you know this is the one we're actually interested in. Where this is a file we're going to use because it has all the information about our camera, the OB5642. Um, right now, it's a, it's a little tricky looking inside the contents, but we're going to learn a lot about this stuff so we can learn how to manipulate all this. And then, so we're going to use this file. And then we're actually going to use this file in order to configure the DUE. Uh, I'll tell you what that means in just a bit. And then we're also going to deal with this file and this file. Um, and these are just to configure the camera um, and the DUE. And then here are the examples that we get. So as you can see, um, the ESP8266, that's another microcontroller. It's not the DUE, so we're not interested in this. Uh, this folder here is the host app. So this is actually where we're going to get to. Um, whenever we have the camera plugged into uh, the Arduino DUE and the Arduino DUE plugged into the computer, we can use this to quickly see files, um, or sorry, to quickly see pictures live. Uh, so right now, this is the version one. Uh, it's called the Arducam host. Um, and this is the version one. If you click on it, you can see that we have this interface. If we once we connect everything, we'll be able to open the port um, and then see the camera feed. So we'll be able to take pictures um, through the computer. And this just to so you can see that everything's clear and just working. Uh, we don't need to use this in the future. We can program everything to you know save a picture to an SD card, and we won't need this. But for now, this is very helpful for debugging and just to see that your camera is working. Uh, the one we're going to be interested in is actually uh, version 2. Version 2 has a lot more um, options. So if we click here, it's going to be this one, the Articam Host V2. And OK, you might get this thing that thinks it's a virus, but it's not. So you can run anyway. And this pops up. And as you can see here, it's the same thing as the other one, except you get to choose uh, specific cameras. Ours is the 5642. And then we get a lot more options. And we have to hook it all up in order for this to work. And we need to open it up. We're going to have to set our baud rate. Um, we're going to go with this one because this is the most stable. This one's unstable. So we're going to click this one in the future. Um, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, more later. OK, so let's go back really quick. Um, so again, this is the host two that we're interested in. This, by the way, is you can plug in four cameras at once, and then you can actually see four different displays at the same time. But we're only using one camera right now. If you did want to, you know, say, put a a camera on each side of your CubeSat, you technically could, and this code facilitates the process. But right now, we're going to stick to just one, one camera. OK, so we're going back here. OK, so that's what's in the host app folder. Here, the OV5642 is actually also called the Mini. It's the Mini OV5642. Um, um, and so this is where our examples are going to be. Um, if you look here, uh, we have all these different examples. You can see here the Articam Mini um, 5 megapixel OV5642 um, plus functions. If we click here, we're going to be able to find an Arduino file. 
And this is actually just the examples. Um, I'll give you an example of what this is right now. So see, suddenly we get all the code that we need. And I know this looks intense right now, but it's really not because most of this is code that we don't need. They're just setting up different um, settings. And this is for different cameras as well. Like, uh, I'll show you more in a bit, but well, this one is specifically for our camera, but all this code right here is just setting up different settings. You can set your exposure level, you know, have special effects, a sharpness. Um, we're not going to, we're gonna focus on this another lecture, but you know, this code is actually not that difficult um, and we'll, We'll, we'll learn, it's all about learning. And this is what makes you very valuable in the industry once you do learn it. At first it's intimidating, but don't worry. Okay, so that this is a folder we're going to be interested in. Um, this folder we're not gonna be interested because in we're not using a Raspberry Pi. Um, this is something else, this is something else as well. So these two folders right here are the ones we're interested in. The host app to see our live pictures. Um, and then this mini folder, the camera mini folder, so we can pull up different examples. So we can see the camera working by itself with its plus functions. Um, if you keep going down, you can use, um, this, is, this is similar to this one, except this takes, I haven't played too much with this code, but uh, uh, raw format versus JPEG, for example, um, raw is, um, it, you get a lot more data, so the files are bigger, the pictures are higher quality. Uh, these tend to be more for scientific purposes. If you want to take a picture of the earth, you can just use this. This is more for very big files, like we'll, we'll see later. But if you keep looking down, we also have an example, so we can capture to an SD card. So we can take a picture with the camera and then that picture can go straight to an SD card. And this is exactly the type of stuff we're interested in. Um, so once we take a picture of say the earth um, on, you know, where Cambodia is visible, we wanna save that picture to a storage space like an SD card on the spacecraft. And then, you know, we can figure out how to downlink that after. And then this shows you the types of codes to put your camera into low power mode. And that's another big thing we're interested in. So we're actually going to, you know, we could always reference these examples. Um, you get a lot of settings here just to play with them, the sharpness, everything. You got to determine if the earth might be too bright. If you got to tone down the brightness, you could get a better picture. Um, this will show you how to upload a picture to an SD card. This shows you how to put the camera into low power mode. You know, this shows you how to take videos. Um, oh, I think this is, this is how um, you could use the external trigger pin on the camera to then send the camera to send the picture to an SD card. See, there's so many examples here that we can learn so much from. And that's so, super exciting. And, you know, this is what's going to really enable us to have a successful mission, learning all this code um, and you know, being able to apply it to our own applications. We're going to end up using one script, combining different little things that we learned from all these examples and apply them to our own applications. Um, and it's going to be amazing. Okay, so now that I went over that, let me go back to where we started. So we downloaded this zip file right here. Um, usually in Arduino, when you want to add a library, so we want to add, um, we want to add all this to our Arduino um, uh, libraries, so we can just have easy access to everything, and so that when we download, when we upload the code for those examples, the um, um, all these are automatically read. So, for example, so when we go do the mini and we go to the plus functions here. So we have the code right here. One sec. But as you can tell, um, this code also wants to include uh, the memory saver.h file. And there's no way of the Arduino code um, to know that this thing exists because we don't have it in our library yet. 
and we need to add we need to add this this we need to add this to uh, the Arduino library in order um, for files to be extracted because every time we have an example um, it's going to reference different files and so let's look at how we can do that real quick okay so if you're here you have to go to sketch and then under include a library so right now I do have it downloaded but I'm going to show you how you would if you don't so you're going to want to do add.zip library and so we're going to click on that and then you're going to go to wherever that folder you downloaded is so here um, if you just upload this it's actually not going to work because because when you go into here remember um, you just end up here and then the IDE can't read that it's like what is this so in reality we want to zip this one so then once it act access accesses that folder it's going to be able to see a lot all the content that it really needs um, let me give you a quick example if you just do this one it won't work watch see it's gonna say it does not contain a valid library and that's because we didn't go deep enough if you go into here it just goes into this but in reality it wants to see this right after so in order to do that we're just going to go back to original um, the one we extracted we can go in here we're gonna click this and then this this is the one that it wants to actually um, see so we're going to send this to a compressed um, zipped folder so let it do that real quick okay and that's good because once we go inside it we're going to be able to see oh wait maybe not here let's see let's see this is a little confusing I'm sorry okay so let's try that again include library add zip folder I'm probably just I'm just gonna give you the folder that you need to click on so you don't have to go through all this so we're gonna go inside here it looks like the exact same thing but it's not open oh it's the same exact thing okay sorry so we're gonna go in here we actually this is not what we want um, again. okay we're gonna ignore that so we're gonna go here and we actually want to put all this in a compressed folder so let's just click on all that and actually let's just compress this one because we don't need none of these so let's just make this really easy on us and send this one to a compressed folder and there it is and this is the one we're interested in so now we're going to go back to the arduino library or the ide go to sketch include library add.zip file go to wherever you stored this folder so we're gonna go deep inside where we were. And again, this is the folder that we're interested in. It actually wants to see the contents um, inside of that. So here it needs to be zipped. So we're gonna use this folder. So we're gonna hit open. And yay. So I personally already have the library, but for you, it should just say added. And then as soon as that happens, now you're going to be able to access all the examples from the ID itself. So if you just go to file and then examples, you're going to be able to see that, look, here you should have this Arducam um, uh, option here. And then you're going to see everything we just went over, but it's just going to be in the ID itself. So again, we're interested in the mini and you can see that we have different uh, example options. For us, let's click on, on the, the, uh, this one, the Arducam Mini 5 megapixel OV5642 plus functions. So if we click here, we are sent here. And as you can see, um, we finally 
if we hit verify, this just verifies that all the code is going to work before we upload it. I mean, of course, we still need to set up the camera. We need to wire it up. And yeah, it's done compiling. So it, it should have read this. It This is um, in its radar now. All the files that we saw earlier are in its radar. Um, so let's quickly look really quick at how do we wire this thing up? Because of course, before we set this up, we need to actually, um, we need to wire up the Arduino do it. Okay, with the camera. Okay, so let's do that. So here, let's just take this camera right here and use it. Right now, I do have everything connected. You just can't see it because it's in front of me and my desk, but I'm just going to wire everything up here um, just so you know what to do. So as mentioned before, the ArduCam, it uses both SPI and um, I2C, and it uses SPI just to send um, the pictures. Um, it, it, it's, SPI is used for data purposes, and I2C is used for settings. Like whenever you change a setting or the camera needs to be acknowledged and recognized by the DUE, uh, that's done through the I2C lines. And the SPI lines, which includes MOSI and MISO, um, this has to do once you take a picture, these are the lines that are going to be used in order to send all the data. Remember, SPI versus I2C, um, SPI is a lot faster than I2C. SPI, you can do faster than 20, 20 megabits per second. And I2C, you only get around 3.4 megabits per second. And these, you know, a five megapixel camera, that's, that's a lot. If we have an eight bit pixel and we have five megapixels that say it's around 5 million, that's going to be around, that's a lot. <laughs> um, but luckily, JPEG images tend to be compressed, so instead of, um, 5 million bytes, um, the pictures themselves could be smaller if they're compressed with JPEG. It, with raw images, though, they're not compressed. You get a little bit more detail, but um, sometimes for our applications, it's better to use JPEG. Okay, so quickly, let's look at the DUE. Um, so if you can't tell, this right here is exactly this as well. This is just the pinout. Um, so here are the analog pins. Let me use my pen real quick. Okay. So as you can see, here are the analog pins. And if you look right here, the analog pins are right here. We have all these digital pins right here. Digital pins are right here. You know, this header down here, it's this one. And basically this image on the left just gives us a description of every pin. Um, if you look at the camera real quick, so this is the chip select pin for the spy. So that just, um, if you remember, the chip select pin is the pin that goes low if the master, the due, wants to speak to the camera. It's going to drop this pin low. It's just going to make it go from high to low in order to let the camera know that it, or, yeah, in, in order to let the camera know that the DUE wants to talk to it. And so let's quickly look at the examples um, that we were on earlier. So here, so ignore, ignore this right now. This is just setting up an image. I'll go over how to read this in the next lecture. But for now, um, if you notice, this example says that the CS pin is seven, so the chip select pin. This is the pin we're going to uh, use um, in order to let the ArduCam know that we're talking to it. So if we go back, um, let's just say that, okay, here's seven. We're going to connect this to seven. And now here we have MOSI. That's master out, slave in. This is the line that the master or sorry, remember we're using main and sub. So it's main out, sub in. So the main out, th this means that this is what the DUE uses to talk 
to the, the Ardu ArduCam. Um, so if you look at this pinout right here, you'll see that the MOSI and the MISO and the serial clock lines are all in this header in the middle, um, which is just this right here for the DUE. So if you look closely, um, this, this pin right here is the MISO. This pin right here is the serial clock line. This pin here is the reset pin, which we don't need, so we're going to ignore this one. Um, this pin here is ground, and we, we could also use the ground here anywhere. All the grounds on the DUE are connected together, so it doesn't matter which one you connect ground to because, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can definitely just use the, this ground, but yeah. And then this line here, this pin, is the MOSI, the main out sub in. And this is the main in sub out. So this is the pin that, um, this is the ArduCam sends the picture through this line to the Arduino DUE, which is important. Um, and here we have five volts, but we're actually not gonna use um, five volts. Um, the ArduCam, you can actually power it using either five volts or 3.3 volts. What happens is that if you give five volts into the VCC pin, um, all it's going to do is step down the voltage. So it's going to force the five volts to drop down to 3.3 volts, but this actually causes some heat. It, we lose some energy whenever we step down. Um, it's pretty inefficient, so we might as well just start off with 3.3 volts. And this is so the this chip and the whole camera doesn't heat up. Um, too much. In space, we want to be very careful about um, thermal issues, so we're going to use 3.3 volts to prevent overheating. And if you look here, the 3.3 volts are right here. Sorry, this is a little blurry, but yeah, this is where the 3.3 volts are at. Okay, so let's go back to wiring. So again, we're interested right now in the MOSI, the main out sub in, and where is that? where we see that MOSI is this one. It's that pin right here. So let's connect this to here. Okay. And now we want the, sorry, we want the MISO. And the MISO is right here. Okay. So that means it's going to be this one. Okay. So, okay, that's where you're going to connect that. And then we want the serial clock line. This determines how fast um, data, how, how fast every bit is pulsing. Uh, we're going to choose for the serial clock, we're going to um, use one, 115,200 um, for our baud rate. And we're sticking to this number because this tends to be one of the highest numbers we could use um, for our data rate. Um, it's how many symbols per second um, are sent. Um, and this is because this is the fastest and most stable one that um, we have for Arduino. So we're gonna stick with this for now. And if we look at the pinout for the DUE, uh, we can see that this is the serial clock line, top middle, and therefore we're going to use that right here. Sorry, I hope that's not too messy. Okay. And then we have ground. So we can use any ground that we want. If we look here, we can see a ground right there. So I'm just going to use that one.
And now we're going to uh, plug it into power. So remember the 3.3 volts is right here. So we're going to bring the three volts here. Perfect. And now we want to use uh, the I2C lines. Now here's a big point about the DUE. So the DUE actually has two separate um, I squared C buses. And I think that's for safety purposes, apparently. So the DUE is very, it's more professional than the, the UNO, UNO, for example. It uses an ARM Cortex um, uh, processor core and it, it, it's very, it's, very professional for industry. A lot of smartphones use this, satellites, cars, um, laptops. Um, and so, you know, sometimes they give you all these extra features just in case. So sometimes if you have too many things on your I2C bus, um, you can run into issues. Um, so they always, they give you a second one um, just in case. This is actually the second one right here. SCL1 and SDA1 is the second um, I squared C bus that we have on the DUE. Um, I'm trying to find where the original, where the standard one is. Um, where is it? Okay. Oh, it's down here. <laughs> You probably saw that before me. So anyway, this is what we typically use. So whenever we, um, whenever we use um, I2C, so if you look at the code real quick, uh, we're always going to do include wire.h, and that's how you, it's not I2C. They didn't want to pay for licensing or something when you use the name, so they just called it wire. Um, SPY, they just use SPY whenever you use a SPY protocol. But when we use I2C protocol, we use wire.h. So anyway, in this example, you'll notice that they actually, if you look right here, so the Ardu, the, sorry, the DUE, um, it's based off the, this microcontroller right here called the SAM3X8E. And this is just, um, this is actually the heart of the DUE. This is where every single little thing is wired to. You know, if you look at the schematics or if you look at the board files, you'll see that every little connection, or not everything, but all the signal pins, the analog, the digital, they're all connected to this pin or this microcontroller, which is the heart of everything. So actually Arduino itself, it's not, like the DUE, it's not a microcontroller. It's just, it's a breakout board that uses this microcontroller, the SAM3X8E. And this is what actually has um, all the magic in it. But Arduino, they just made a, a breakout board, which is this whole thing. Um, and, you know, they added extra little things. They added, you know, all the power, they added um, the ability to use USB, they added the ability to um, power externally, um, things like that. But yes, so we're actually using the, the SAM3X8E microcontroller, um, which the Arduino DUE, Arduino DUE is based off of. So when we look at the code, we see that it says, okay, if we're using the SAM3X8E, um, initiate the I2C, the wire one line, which actually, if you go back here, it's not this, they're not using the original I2C bus. I think they assume we have a lot of things connected to this already. So just for safety, um, just to keep the Arduino alone, um, they're just using this. Now, if we wanted to, we can simply go to the example and delete this, be like, okay, no, I just wanna use this one. Then that's all you have to do. But I'm just going to stick to the example for now. Um, they wanted the wire one dot begin. 
So we're going to be using um, this I2C bus. It's the second one. The first one, it's, it's like SDA0, SCL0, not really, it's just that. Um, but the second um, I2C bus is this um, SCL1 and SDA1. And remember, this is the serial clock line and this is the serial data line because I2C only uses two lines. It's right there. Okay. And then, you know, it says if you're using um, this microcontroller, use this. Otherwise, just use the regular bus. Like, say we use some other, um, say we use the Uno, for example, it's not going to be the SAM 3XAE. And the Uno doesn't have, it doesn't have this. So if we look really quick at the Uno, um, I have a pinout right here. Oops. Oops. Okay. The Uno only has one I2C bus. And remember, you can fit 127 different devices with this. The Due, um, yeah, if you look, you don't see much else. There's no other I2C bus. But the Due has the feature. Um, here, let me go back to where I was. It has the feature where it actually not only has one, but two. So you can technically hook up 127 devices to this one and then another 127 devices to this one, which is ridiculous. <laughs> Sometimes when you hook up too many devices, though, and you use pull-up resistors and you suddenly get this, um, you can lock the bus and you get all these issues um, with capacitance or um, we're not going to get into that right now because we shouldn't face that problem because we have very little devices, but we might in the future run into problems. So we're going to go over that for more advanced lectures. Um, but for now, note that that example that we pointed out is just using this one. So if you connect the ArduCam, if you connect this ArduCam like to these two, it's not going to work unless unless you change this, you get rid of the one and leave it as normal because this is actually the normal way of initiating the I2C bus. Um, and that would just be using this. But again, I'm just gonna assume you didn't change it and leave it as one. So that means we're going to be using um, uh, this right here, which again is connected to these two. And on the DUA, if we look here, we're going to use SDA1, which connects to this one. And then we're going to do SCL1, which connects to this one. And that is it for that. So, so you can stop the video there and make sure you have all those connections. Um, and then so I have it already plugged in like this. I already wired up my ArduCam to work this way. So I'm going to show you what happens when we run the code. So right now, again, we're not really gonna focus on all these details right now. I just wanna show you up how to set it up. Um, and actually, you're going to run into problems if you don't set up this file to accept the DUE. I know I was talking about that we're using this, the Sound3x AE, but there's no way that um, the IDE knows. Yes, it's going to know that it's going to be detected through here, but we actually have to edit a file to let it know that we're going to be using the Sound3x AE. Um, and this is where actually we're going to have to go back to our files. So here, let me back up real quick. You uploaded this to the library, but now everything inside here is actually this is not what the IDE is using. You have to go to the original folder that um, the IDE is using. So for example, let me see if I know how to do that. Um, okay, so let's click show sketch folder. And okay. So this is where the library is actually located. So if you go back, 
remember we have that mini folder. And in that mini folder is this example. If we go back one, that's that. Here's the article. Okay, so the examples are here, but now we actually have to modify this specific file to work with the due. So let's click on it really quick. Okay, so I like, you can open it in a text folder. I like to use Sublime. Sublime is this. Let me show you real quick. Okay, whoops. Ignore all that. So Sublime is this really cool thing that, um, I already have it. Okay, anyway. So, oh yeah, that's true, because I already had it downloaded. Anyway, so Sublime is this really cool text editor. You can, if you look here, I had the, where is it? I had the, our example here. So whenever you open it, it'll show up like this, but down here, bottom right, you can actually edit which language it's supposed to read. And if you hit C++, and it makes everything all pretty, you can you know, quickly scroll through it here. Um, if you click on this, you're like, oh, where did this come from? Like, you just highlight it, and then it shows you um, where it's highlighted in other places. Um, SAM3XAE. Um, but yeah, anyway, feel free to, you know, Google um, Sublime text editor and then download it, and then you can get this really cool setup right here. But anyway, so I'm going to go back to where we need to be which is here, we need to edit this file. So if you need to make it look like this. So right now, I think it's probably, it's showing up something different. Um, this is how you make a comment. You have to uncomment this line and then save it. So you're gonna have to hit save. And there you go. I think, yeah, that, this library should be edited now. Um, make sure that if you're just using this camera, you don't just do this. In order to make it work with Arduino Due, it has to say bit rotation fixed. Okay. And so once you have it saved like that, then you'll be able to see in the file that, oh, hey, I just saved it. It's today is the 4th, it's Friday, 5.37. Got it saved the fourth, five thirty-seven. Yes, so I just saved it. That's that's how you know that you saved it. Now, you should be able to go to your code, and let's try to make it run. So let's see. So I have it. My Arduino Due plugged in. Remember, you have to click on the Due. Sometimes you have to download. Um, you have to um. If you don't have the Due um, downloaded, I think it's automatic. If it's not, just Google how to add it to the Arduino IDE, and it'll, sh it'll show you. But you know, you click on Due. Um, where's Due? Due. Okay. Oh, it's all the way down here. Yeah. So you gotta click on the programming port. So there's two USB ports on the Due which is strange. The native port, um, it's for it's for configuring the Due itself. For, so we're going to focus on the programming port. And if you look at the Due, it's this one. Hold on. Okay. It's, this is the programming port. And this is the native. So we do not want to use this because it won't work. You have to plug to your computer um, this micro uh, USB um, into your computer, OK? And then from there, it should be detected, and it should let you know which port it thinks it is. For me, it's going to be COM6. For you, it's going to be COM20, 25, 2, 1, whatever. So you click on it, and then Let's cross our fingers. We use the right CS pin, seven. Let's make sure. Yes, connected to seven. Okay. 
So that should work. Let's hit upload. And it's uploading perfect. So this color tends to represent errors, but um, with the due date, it's actually fine. <laughs> it just gives you more detail about its um, uploading process. So once that's done, you verify that it's successful. Perfect. It has it's done uploading. So now nothing's happening. But that's because this is actually um, we're supposed to use the host app for this. So remember, we're gonna go back to here. Um, if you go back, oh, oh, it's in. Yeah, so this is just our libraries. So we're going to go back to the original file that we downloaded. Um, and it should be here. Remember in the Articam. Oh, sorry. OK, you can go back to your original file. So this is the, it should be in your IDE. If you go under examples, that's where the host app is located. So you click here. We could use this one, but in order to access more features on of the OV5642, we're going to go in version 2. We're going to click on this. And then, OK. So now, remember, let's look at the example real quick. It says that our baud rate, what did they set it up to? Oh, geez. OK. So it says if SAM3x8E was detected, um, then it's going to use this baud rate, the serial.begin. Because um, we're going to access this through USB, which is serial. Um, and okay, so I think, yeah, that's it. So we're going to set our baud rate for the host app to be 115 to 100. And then here, the picks is which camera you're using. We're using the 5642. And now that we did that, so for me, it was COM6. For you, it's going to be something else, probably. So I'm going to hit um, open. Awesome. OK, let me do that one more time. Let me close it and then open it again. OK, that's what should have, that's what should have been said. The Arducam also started. And the spy interface is OK. Awesome. So that means that. Um, this just went through the code. Um, okay, again, this is going to be a little confusing, but we're going to get into more detail about this. So right now, this is just when the when the code starts. So again, this is just this is what a a bitmap is. Um, so if you want a quick quick crash course on what that means, um, I wrote down here what. Oh wait. What is this? OK, actually, I'm going to go over that later. Not right now. I just want to show you how to set this up without looking at the code too much, because it's actually not that bad. It's just it looks very confusing right now, but it's not. OK, so where were we? Um, oh, yeah, this is where we were. Yeah. So if we look here, it's going to um, it's going to set things up. The wire library, it's going to set the the chip select as an output. It's going to make it a high because when it becomes a low, that means the camera is being talked to. Spy begins. And then this is where it might seem confusing, but this is just um, low level code that's written to configure the camera. Um, when we go into a while one loop, this means this is going to run forever until it exits. So um, until it's so this is while it's true it's going to run this forever but if it's false um it exits well, let's not get into that right now i think i just confused everyone sorry anyway so this basically checks that the spy interface is working it just it uses these registers in order to um um, um detect that the spy bus is connected. So for example, if you look here, it says, OK, if you don't receive this specific signal, the specific value, 
that means that there is a spy interface error. Otherwise, if you did receive this signal, in other words, you can say, okay, the spy interface is okay, so it's connected. So whenever the DUA sends this specific number to us, it means that the spy interface is connected. And then it goes down to the same thing, and, and um, this is actually where the I2C bus um, is used. It checks if the camera module type is OV5642. Remember, the spy bus is used for data transfer, and then the I2, this I2C bus is used uh, to configure the camera. So for example, to make sure that it's the OV5642 type of camera. Um, and you know, if it, it says, if I didn't receive this specific value, it's in hexadecimal, by the way, um, it's going to say, I can't find the module. And then otherwise, if you did receive this uh, value, in the else statement, um, it means that the OV5642 camera was detected. And so that's exactly what we're seeing here. So we see um, the, we see that, okay, uh, so okay, when we close it, we're gonna open it, and then it runs the code. And so as you can see, it says, okay, this spy interface is okay. And then it should be saying that, oh, OV5642 detected. So let me do it again. I think it's just this specific app might have a little bit of an issue. It should work actually, it's just not showing it. Let's do it one more time. Okay, maybe it's only when I take a picture. So right here, we can actually play with the resolution. So if we play with a 320 by 240 picture, um, and this is in light mode, and then um, this mode here is whether you wanna take one picture or make a video continuous. So for now, we're just gonna take a picture. I just wanna show you what this looks like. Um, and let's leave this as this, and let's press capture. Oh, and there I am. Hello. Let's press continuous. Let's see what happens. See, do you see me? Ooh. You can see that because of the baud rate, there's a little bit of lag. Um, oops, I need to like hit stop. So hit stop. And so if we increase this here, it should give us a, a better resolution. Um, this might take a little longer. So I'm just not gonna play with this for now. You can play with all these settings. I think if you set to um, B BMP, uh, the bitmap image, um, then you can really play with these settings and get much higher quality pictures. Oh God, I do not, I don't wanna stream. Let's see if we can. So as you can see, because of our baud rate, it's going to take a little longer uh, to download or to, to take a picture. So the picture actually was taken immediately, but now all that data, every single pixel is being sent to the DUA and it takes just a bit. You can actually calculate exactly how long it takes. See, this is a much higher quality image. Um, I'm going to put my hand right in front of it and see if it captures it. So I think this is in bytes. I need to confirm, but we're going to get more into this um, in the next lecture. So let's see. Oh, there you go. There's my fingers. And right now we're using a camera where it actually, you can see about 180 degrees um, from left to right. Um, and this is for the purpose, say we're in the International Space Station and we want to take a picture of the entire Earth, we'll be able to see the whole Earth in there, um, which is amazing. We only need like a hundred, I forgot exactly how many degrees. We'll go over that in the future. But you can see how to take a high quality image now. Um, we could actually do this through an SD card as well, um, which I actually have connected as well. Um, but we're going to go over that later. For now, I'm just glad I got to show you exactly how to use this. Um, don't go through the code right now because it seems confusing, but again, it's really not that confusing. And I, I'm gonna go into a lot more detail about this. For now, just play with all the settings and just start getting familiar with um, 
uh, little details. There's a lot to read on. You can go through all the examples. Um, we're going to go over the SD card stuff later, and then we're going to um, get into exactly what all this means. Um, again, it looks confusing, but it, it's not really that confusing. Uh, once you, you know, you got to practice, of course, but it's not, it's not too bad. But this stuff is very valuable. And this is some of the hardest code I've actually seen. So don't freak out. This is not normal. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this for now. I'm going to upload, um, I'm going to take like a picture of this. Uh, I'm going to post some links. And if you have any questions, please send me a message and I will get back to you. Uh, we're going to keep, continue this lesson in the next lecture and get into more detail. I know for now this was a ton of detail, so I don't want to overwhelm you guys too much. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for sticking around, and I hope that was helpful. All right. I'll see you.